Now, I don't know if all of you are aware of this, but there's a ton of languages spoken in this country, and they're apparently all different forms of English. The English Department at Rutgers Indoctrination Center are supposedly adjusting their grammar and sentence structure standards in order to, quote, stand with and respond, unquote, to the Marxist Black Lives Matter movement, according to the Washington Free Beacon. So you mean to tell me that they're going to adjust standards for proper grammar so that non-white students feel more included for the way they write? You know, there used to be a word for people who think others need special treatment and relaxed standards for academic pursuits based on their ethnic backgrounds. Racists! Hey everybody, thanks for joining me once again here on MRC-TV. I'm Nick Kangatis. What is wrong with the people in charge of public universities? They've become Orwellian-level re-education centers, only good for milking people of tens of, if not hundreds, of thousands of dollars in exchange for an education. I didn't say these institutions make people intelligent, only that they've been and are continuing to be educated. So, English Department Chairwoman Rebecca Walkowitz reportedly wrote an email explaining the changes being made to standards within the Rutgers English Department. And I can't make this stuff up. Just listen to what Walkowitz wrote. Quote, This approach challenges the familiar dogma that writing instruction should limit emphasis on grammar slash sentence level issues so as not to put students from multilingual, non-standard, academic English backgrounds at a disadvantage. Instead, it encourages students to develop a critical awareness of the variety of choices available to them with regard to micro-level issues in order to empower them and equip them to push against biases based on written accents." Unquote. Basically, we're not going to hold you to the standards we hold the rest of the student body to when it comes to English because we think you're too stupid and would be offended if we corrected your grammar. Listen. I understand why W. Bush and Obama wanted everyone to go to college and it wasn't to ensure they had a prosperous future. They wanted an entire generation to not only not be left behind for inadequate grades, but they wanted said entire generation to be in debt to the government with worthless degrees that guaranteed many of them wouldn't be able to repay them anytime soon. Universities and their communist indoctrinators of every race, masquerading as professors, have been radicalizing young, impressionable minds for decades, with the fruit of their labor showing themselves in force in the last few years. I believe they call themselves activists, while the radical communist media cover for their peaceful protests. The Free Beacon spoke to a speech pathologist, Leonidas Johnson, about the change, and he decided to tell the truth about the move. Quote, The idea that expecting a student to write in grammatically correct sentences is indicative of racial bias is asinine. It's like these people believe that being non-white is an inherent handicap or learning disability. That's racism. It has become very clear to me that those who claim to be anti-racist are often the most racist people in this country." Unquote. And there you have it. I've been saying for years that the people who bark the loudest and most often about racism are typically the biggest racists themselves. Now one final thing about the current state of academia. All the woke social justice warrior crap, yeah, a lot of that came from the indoctrination system. You want to know just how depraved and out of touch with reality these communists posing as academics really are? Have you seen some of the garbage coming out of the Poison Ivy League in recent years? Students are allowed to have segregated black-only graduation ceremonies, but God forbid you're an Asian person because they'll dock your testing scores simply for your ethnicity. Well, also, a couple of years ago, Three brilliant intellectuals decided to take it upon themselves to show just how insane and obsessed with social justice academia has become. So they wrote 20 academic works, submitted them for review within academic journals, the same journals that current professors refer to when researching topics to teach their students, and seven of them were accepted with four of them being published. One even won an award before they were found out. We told them exactly what they wanted to hear, and we gave them bogus statistics to fuel what they already wanted to believe. Yeah, yeah, we started off with the idea that what we wanted to get to was a conclusion, and then we made up all the crap in between yeah. to get to it. And the conclusion was, 
feminism should train men the way we train dogs so that we can get rid of rape culture. You know, put them on leashes. You know, yeah. it's right in the paper. It's all it there. Unfortunately, we cannot put men on leashes. It's not politically feasible to put men on leashes. You guys wrote that? Yeah. Yeah. To they or to publish yank it. their leashes when they misbehave. Yeah. And this so, paper didn't uh, just get published. The journal said that this was exemplary scholarship and gave it an award. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I could sit here all day and talk to you about why the higher education and a growing portion of the K through 12 education systems in this country are broken. Heck, if it were up to me, I'd get rid of the Department of Education immediately. I know that might sound crazy to some, but name me an institution in this country that runs better with the government subsidizing it or being in charge of it. Everything the government is in charge of runs at the speed of stupid. Maybe that's why we seem to be getting more woke graduates ruining aspects of our real world society and and less intelligent graduates who understand the value of hard work in favor of the communist practice of profiting off of activism. What's your take out there? Was what I just talked about something that needed to be said? Did I not go far enough? Let me know in the comments where I do read most of them and respond to some. And don't forget to follow me on Parlor. If you like this video, don't forget to share it and give it a thumbs up. Those are the two best ways to let us know you want us to keep these videos coming. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so that they might actually let you know when MRC TV comes out with a new video if they haven't taken it down yet. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. For MRC TV, I'm Nick Kingadis.